Okay. You punch in the green thing and push it up. There you go. Ooh, yeah. Yep. Okay. Okay. From Time Warner Cable Field at Fox City Stadium in Grand Chute, welcome to the Division II State Championship game with the 65th Annual WIAA State Baseball Tournament as the Ellsworth Panthers get ready to face the Portage Warriors. Hi, everybody. Great to have you with us on Fox Sports Wisconsin. Bill Brophy, Jay Wilson with you. The Division II title game, Ellsworth and Portage. Ellsworth yesterday, a 5-1 winner in the semifinals against Racine St. Catharines. They got some big hits from Tyler Marson. Today, they're going with their stud pitcher, that's Brady Schrader. Well, I don't know if anybody thought we'd see Ellsworth here. I've seen St. Cates as the number one team. They shocked him last time. Marzen with the three hits. George Akakis threw a great game, kept him off balance all night. They turned to Schroeder to do the same today against Portage. All right, and those Portage Warriors, Schroeder on the mound is going to have to worry about the three and four hitters along with the rest of the guys. But uh, Travis Hamilton and Mike Jordahl were very good in the semifinal yesterday. Again, Portage pulls off an upset, beating the hometown heroes from Fox Valley Lutheran. They have the All-State pitcher, Ryan Redou. Portage came out, hit him in the mouth in the first inning with four runs. Travis Hamilton and Jordahl were in the middle of that rally. They were in the middle of everything. Had five hits between them. Today, they get to go for the state title. Should be fun. Yep, you bet. Ellsworth and Portage will have the starting lineups in the first pitch in just a moment from Grant Shoot. We'll take a break first. You're watching WIAA State Tournament Baseball on Fox Sports Wisconsin. There you go. An overcast afternoon at Fox City Stadium in Grand Chute as Portage and Ellsworth get ready to settle the Division II state championship. Clouds have moved in. There's a big front of rain, but it, we're hopeful that it will stay just north of here and we'll be able to complete our Division II championship without delay. Portage, the visiting team. Ellsworth, the home team. They are taking the field right now. Let's take a look at the batting order for Mike Hemmings, Portage Warriors. Leading off and playing second base will be Brady Green. Jordan Walker's the left fielder. He hits second. Travis Hamilton, the shortstop, third. And the cleanup man is Mike Jordahl, the catcher. A couple of Bortzes hitting fifth and sixth. Adam, the pitcher. Matt, the third baseman. Bo Zine is in center field, hitting seventh. Max Ferrari, who gets to start at first base today, will hit eighth. And Adam Walls, the right fielder, hits ninth for Portage. And on the mound for Ellsworth. There, fireballing right-hander Brady Schroeder. He's a senior, 5'11", 170 pounds. Schroeder 
Five and three in the year, as you can see, with a 261 ERA. This is his ninth game. They've all been starts. He's thrown six complete games and a shutout. There's the rest of his numbers. Brady Schroeder, good athlete. And they hope he does as well as James Jurakakis did last night. And stuffing was seen. St. Kate's coming off on balance all night with a lot of breaking stuff. And I think surprised the top-ranked team in the state. Yeah, that was a five-hitter by the Ellsworth pitcher last night. 5-1 the final. Ellsworth over Racine St. Catharines in the semifinals. Game ended after midnight, so it was a short night for <laughs> some folks, yeah. including the guys in purple. Schroeder was the starting pitcher in the Ellsworth sectional final win over Somerset. He allowed three hits, struck out eight in that 5-1 sectional final win, and now... He's going to try to pitch Ellsworth to the state championship. But Portage, as we saw last night, they can score some runs. Seven runs on eight hits over Fox Valley Lutheran. And Bro said one of the best pitchers in the state and Ryan Radu last night. And they hit him early. And let's see how they fare against Schroeder today. Brady Green, the leadoff, takes high ball one. He came out last night, got on base against Radu, got hit by a pitch. One of four hit batsmen in the first inning and stole base. And before he got settled in the seats, Portage was up on the Radu. one nothing. Bunch of hits fouled. Bing, bing, bing. A bunch of hit batsmen fouled by the end of the inning. The Foxes were down by four to Portage. And Schroeder gets that one in there for strike one. Two and one the count to Brady Green. Jordan Walker next, followed by Travis Hamilton for Portage. Green's a leading hitter, a 400 hitter. Three homers, 26 RBIs. With the wins last night, Portage is now 21 and 6 on the season, while Ellsworth also hit the 20 win mark. 20 and 5, the mark for the Panthers. 2 2 to Green. He just spins out of the way of that one. And that barely missed, but it's 3 and 2. Green's one of eight seniors on this club. Payoff pitch from Schroeder, and he walked him. So Green does what a leadoff hitter wants to do, gets on base. Team leading 23rd walk for Brady Green. Actually had a walk last night, so that's number 24. Yeah, in his career he has 65 walks now. As you say, that's what a leadoff guy is supposed to do, work the yeah. count and get on base anyway at all. He's also Portage's all-time leader and runs scored, 77 coming into the tournament. And 13 of 14 of stolen base attempts coming into the tournament. He had two stolen bags last night against Fox Valley Lutheran. And two runs scored as well. Here's Jordan Walker, left fielder for Portage. Off goes Green to second. And he's going to get in with a stolen base. Volker never had a chance. Green with a big jump. Volker's throw was tardy. So Portage trying to apply some early offensive pressure on Ellsworth. What they did last night. Quieted a roaring crowd. They had a big house for Fox Valley Lutheran Portage. Not as big this afternoon. Portage well represented again. Fox Valley Lutheran, of course, located in Appleton. So a short drive. And boy, they had a group. It was jam-packed from behind home plate all the way down the first baseline. But they went home disappointed as Portage won the game 7-2. One and one the count to Jordan Walker. Ah, that one drops in for a strike and Schroeder with a beautiful breaking ball makes it one and two. Walker's a 258 hitter. Had 12 RBIs. Didn't have an extra base hit. Well, he was clutch in the sectional final against Lodi. His two-run single won the game 7-6 in the ninth inning, but he looks at strike three there, first out of the inning. And didn't like what he saw as Schroeder's breaking pitch. <laughs> yeah, that'll make you think, won't it? There's the defense for Ellsworth. The outfield for Ellsworth, Kroll, Schutz, Giese left to right. Matter, Bedhauser, Flynn, Marson third to first. Brandon Volker is the catcher and Brady Schroeder, the pitcher for the Panthers of Ellsworth. Benhauser is the stabilizing force at short, a good athlete. First team all-conference infielder at short. 
And now here's Travis Hamilton. He was impressive last night. Two for four with an RBI and a run scored. And he hit the ball hard every time he was up. Hamilton's a 342 hitter. Three of his 26 cents are doubles. It was his double. I think that woke Brad New up in the first inning. Boom, one off the fence. Drove it a run. Hey, that'll go to center. Greeny will score you from Later there. he lined one by the pitcher of the year. <laughs> but he turned a couple Brad New's fastballs around. Ball two now to Hamilton. And Ryan's a Division I recruit. He'll go to UConn, so. Yeah. Well, Hamilton, speaking of a great career at Portage, he now has 98 career hits in a Portage uniform and 84 runs batted in. That's the Portage career record, 84 RBI. First team all-conference was just selected recently. That's the second year in a row he's first team all-conference in the Northern Badger Conference. 3-0 with the count. Strike call, just got the outside edge. Now the 3-1 coming to Hamilton. That one missed again, and it's ball four, so the second walk of the inning with a strikeout in the middle. More trouble coming for Mr. Schroeder as here comes Mike Jordahl, their talented catcher. Good-looking left-handed hitter. Jordahl's another senior. It's 385. 13 of his 32. It's one for doubles, three for triples. Knocked in a team-high 32. Had a pair of ribs last night when he went three for four. He's up to 34 RBIs in the air. Six feet, five inches tall is Mike Jordahl, and Schroeder's having a little trouble finding the plate right now. Want to know the count to the Portage catcher. He's been hit or miss. Looked good against Walker, punched him out, and a breaking ball over, but he's had trouble with locating against Brady Green and Travis Hamilton, and when ball one goes awry to Jordahl, it prompts a visit from his battery mate. In that sectional final win over Somerset, Schroeder threw first pitch strikes to 18 of the 28 batters he faced. That is usually a pretty good winning formula, but he's having trouble doing that right now. And now it's 2-0 to Jordahl. He can be dominant, though, Schroeder. Struck out 14 in a 4-1 win over Osceola early in the season. Now let's see what he did us in 2-0. Jordahl offers and Fouled back, and that'll reach the seats. In fact, that'll reach the roof of the grandstand. Portage, the second place team of the Badger North Conference with an eight and four record. Reedsburg was the champion. Warriors have now won eight straight games with last night's win. 2-1, took something off it. Bends in for a strike, two and two. That's the pitch that Walker wanted no part of, and he gets, gets it over again. To Big Jordahl. Now a 2-2 pitch coming. Bounces in, and Volker with a nice stop to keep the runners at first and second. Green led off the inning with a walk. He stole second. Jordan Walker out on strikes. Then Hamilton walked first and second, two down. Make it one down, excuse me. 3-2 pitch. Ball four. Schroeder with a wry smile. He thought he had the corner, but didn't. And now the bases are loaded with one out in the first. Courtesy runner for the catcher. Brent Lutt wins. Mm -hmm. That was the move they made all night last night as Jordahl was on base a lot and Lentz came in to run. And Jordahl stops to give some advice to what to expect to Adam Bortz, who follows him in the lineup, and Matt Bortz, mm -hmm. who's in the on-deck circle. Giving a pretty good seminar there to both of them. <laughs> Here's Adam Bortz, the Portage pitcher. 
He's listed at six feet nine in the program. And he is taller than Jordo. I yeah. just noticed that when Jordo stopped to talk to him. Bortz is. Well, if, if Jordahl's six five, I think Bortz might be yeah. six nine, huh? Big kid. He'll be real imposing on the mound oh, yeah. at the bottom of this inning. 250 hitter on the season coming in, and he looks at a strike there. One and one. The count to Adam Bortz. Matt Bortz, the third baseman on deck. Adam was over three last night. He was one of the four guys Ryan Redu hit in the first inning. Tie his tournament record. Schroeder trying to get out of a first inning jam, but that one's a little low. And it's two and one to Adam Bortz. Another one misses. Three and one. No place to put Adam Bortz. Greens at third, Hamilton at second, Lentz at first. Let's see if Bortz is hacking or going to look at another strike. He'll look at another strike. He thought it was ball four. He thought he was looking at ball four, though, yeah. But Todd Krieger, our home plate umpire, said not so fast. Three and two now. What well, a critical early pitch here in the first inning. Bounce to third, but foul. Nice play by Mike Hemming. Mike, Mike is, Hemming is as active in the third base coaching box yeah. as any coach you will ever see. 13th season at Portage. Went to Janesville Craig High School and UW Platteville has a master's degree from UW Lacrosse. Teacher in the Portage School District for 20 years. Just watch him there. Look at that. <laughs> we should put an isolated camera on Hemming. And there's Bortz coming through with a hit to left. One run is in. They'll stop the second run. Hamilton at third. But Bortz with a solid single to left. Puts Portage up 1-0. Bortz is going to be the pitcher. He'll benefit from Adam Bortz, the hitter. That ball was well hit. He'll come off for a courtesy runner after finding the hole between short and third. Green scores. Station to station baseball for everybody else. Devin Thompson will be the runner for Adam Bortz, who gets a nice round of applause from the fans and lots of slaps on the back from his teammates in the dugout. So Matt Bortz, who pitched Portage to the victory last night, a three-hitter over seven innings against Fox Valley Lutheran. Bortz, Matt Bortz allowed only one hit after the first inning last night. He was very good. Struck out seven, walked only one last night. Now he's playing third base today, and he has a chance to help Adam Bortz, who's on the mound for Portage. Bases loaded, one out. Matt Bortz is a first-team all-conference selection for Portage in the Northern Badger. Good fastball from Schroeder. There you go, Manny. Let's go. Portage fans whooping it up. They sense be good to get a big lead like they had last night, the first inning. Two and one. That first inning uprising last night kind of started a seven inning party for the fans in the orange and black. But first inning uprisings do not guarantee victory. Just as nope. Johnson Creek in the Division Four Championship, they spotted Coleman with five runs in the first, but ended up losing the title game 20 to 11. So you just never know. But Portage with the early run. Leads it 1-0. The RBI single by Adam Bortz. The only hit for Portage in the inning, which has featured three walks from Brady Schroeder. 2-2 Two -two to Matt Bortz. Just missed. Another full count. The other title game, or title already decided today, Prescott beat Parkview 4-3 in eight innings. Ellsworth would love to join its fellow conference member, Prescott would take it home a trophy. And a swinging strike three by Matt Bortz. Big one for that guy, Brady Schroeder. Hey, your umpires. 
Todd Krieger from Oshkosh is behind the plate. Ron Quirk of Racine is at first. Tom Cameroon of Blanchardville at second, and Mike Klein of Hewitt at third. Oh, they're spread out from all over the state. Our umpiring crew here for the Division II championship game. Now, here's Bo Zine, the center fielder, with an opportunity to extend that lead, but now two outs and an 0-1 count to the Portage player who wears number one. And nice job by Volker to bring that pitch back into the strike zone, 0 and 2. Zion didn't quite agree with it. And here we go with the 0 2. Schroeder hoping to get out of this first. He went with a high fastball, and that's lined in a left to base hit for Zion. One run is in. Here comes the second run, and sliding across is Brett Lenz, and it's a three-run start for Portage. Bozine finds the same hole between short and third that Bortz did, and running with two out, the courtesy runner scores with a slide. It's 3 nothing Portage. Look where this pitch is. They, they go high fastball, but I guess it wasn't quite high enough or something. Yep, he didn't go up the ladder high enough. Zine turns on it, and it's a big two-run single after a slide by was it Tyler Miller? That was uh, Lentz that slid Lentz, across. Yeah. Yep, yep. He showed good speed as a courtesy runner should have. Scored from second, got the good break with two outs and beat the throw. Here's Max Ferrari again. We mentioned that, oh, hey, there's a pickoff at first. Oh, that's a close call. Zine just barely got back as Marson snuck in behind him. He wasn't originally holding him, but snuck in behind and they almost got him for the third out of the inning. But Ferrari gets the start at first, hitting eighth in the Portage lineup. Max 321 in the year, five for 16. Defensive swing there. He did not get a cut last evening in the game. First and second for Portage, but now two out. And again, Schroeder's high. And it's one and two. Devin Thompson takes his lead off second. And Ferrari gets a bet on that breaking ball, but it's an easy play for Schroeder, who throws to Marson to get Ferrari, and that'll do it for the Portage first inning. But the Warriors, very productive. Bozine, two-run single, the big play. Portage puts up three in the first. And after a half inning of our Division II championship game, our score, Portage 3, Ellsworth coming to bat. fans celebrating a great start for their team. Hi, everybody. Welcome to Grand Shoot. We'll see where we go from here. 3-0 Portage as Ellsworth comes to bat. Let's take a look at the Panthers batting order. Very familiar order from last night's game as Brandon Volker again will lead off the catcher for Ellsworth. Dennis shoots the center fielder, hits next. Number three hitter is Brady Schroeder, the pitcher. Jake Bedhauser, the shortstop, hits fourth. Tyler Marson at first base, hitting fifth. James Jorikas, Hits six, he's the designated hitter. Mitch Matter, the third baseman, hits seventh. Chandler Flynn at second base, hitting seventh. And Dan Giese, the right fielder, hits ninth for the Ellsworth Panthers. And on the mound for Portage, the big right-hander, Adam Bortz. And heavy on the big. Six, nine, two and a quarter. So he's got a presence out there. There's his numbers, four starts, one complete game, one shutout. This is his eighth game. It was actually his fifth start. A minuscule earned run average. And Brandon Volker, the first to face Adam Bortz. And 
That one bounces away from the catcher. Jordan also it's one and one. Adam Borch combined with Alex Dobbins, Dobbins to throw a one hitter in a four nothing win over Richland Center in the sectional semifinal. Came in on Volker. He held his swing, and now it's two and one to the Ellsworth catcher. Good pitch there from Bortz, two and two. It is interesting that there is already someone throwing in the ported bullpen. Wow. I know there is no tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't look like there's even a later this afternoon. Volker just foul. And we don't know if Bortz. <laughs> Might have gotten injured running the bases or yeah. swinging the bat, but before the first pitch was thrown, <laughs> there was activity in the Portage bullpen. Don't see that all the time, do you? No. Kid still got his jacket on, so it's not throwing seriously, whoever the potential reliever is. Two and two, the count on Volker. Ports misses outside, now three and two. So Volker going deep into the count, leading off the Ellsworth first inning. Dennis shoots next. Brady Schroeder third in this inning. This one's looped behind second, and a sliding catch by the right fielder, Adam Walls. Nice play indeed by Walls. He came a long way to retire the leadoff man, Volker, who's now 0 for 5 in the tournament. We've seen those balls drop in all week long, it seems. So much ground to cover out there. But Walls went a long way and made a sparkling catch. One out in the Ellsworth first. Here's Dennis, shoots the center fielder. Ball won the call. Second team all-conference outfielder is a sophomore, Dennis shoots. He said in the middle border conference, Ellsworth was the second place team in that conference with 11 and 3 records. Rolf mentioned Prescott, the newly crowned State Division three champs. Wow, there's a shot up the middle by Schutz for a hit. Bortz got out of the way of that one as Schutz shoots it right up the middle. He's a 360 hitter and he hit a line drive right up the gut right there. Sports didn't have time to react. Prescott, we mentioned the champions of the Middle Border Conference. They were a perfect 14 and 0. And here's Ellsworth playing for the Division II State Championship as well. Now here's Brady Schroeder. First pitch swinging, lifting it to right field. Walls with a much easier play than his first one. And he's made both putouts here in the bottom of the first two down. Shoots at first. Schroeder serves that one into right field. Now Jake Bedhauser, the Ellsworth shortstop. Three hundred twenty five feet down each line here at Fox City Stadium. Power alleys three eighty five to left four oh five to right. Wind's blowing out the left, so get one up in that wind, and you got a chance today. We've only seen two home runs in the tournament in this BB Corps bat era. There you see the flags in right center field pushing from the right field corner to the left field corner. Comfortable oh. temperatures in the 70s. And now time called. Wade Lebecki, the tournament director, says this is his seventh baseball tournament that he's been in charge of, both summer and spring. And They've had rain every tournament, but this one so far, knock on wood. There you see the conditions. Very pleasant afternoon. And again, rain hopefully staying to the north. It is very close according to the radar. Mm -hmm. well, I remember 2008 when we got all that rain? Yes. We couldn't get home. There was so much flooding. At least the director out. We had a Terrible, terrible time, but no such problems this time around. Pitch out. It impacted the tournament in the 
We lost to Day, and that enabled Kenosha Bradford yeah. to come back with her ace pitcher, Sam Chazelle, unfortunately, has since died. Chazelle was a great pitcher. And he won two games in that tournament. Kimberly, which had a pretty good team, ended up getting beat by Chazelle in the finals, which were played on Friday. Ed Hauser watches that one go by, and he's moved the count to three and one now. I'm sure Ryan McGinnis, the Kimberly coach, will tell you. He yeah. remembers that year it wasn't for the floods. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. It was for that extra day of the tournament. Ooh, Bedhauser creates a little breeze as he big. makes a big cut at that one. He had a really good team. He had a Brad Schreiber went oh, on yeah. Purdue. He still had Purdue. In fact, he had drafted this year, I believe. But he was a good player. They had a lot of good players. Three and two, two outs. Shoots at first. And time called. Jake Bethauser, we mentioned in the field, he was first team all conference infielder. He's also second team all conference inside linebacker in football for Ellsworth. See a lot of guys doing the multi sport thing. Bethauser has been successful in everything he tries athletically. Runner going, and pitch popped up foul behind the screen. And Hauser had a hit in four trips yesterday, a couple of walks. <laughs> and now the 3 2 pitch coming to the Ellsworth shortstop. And Board steps off. Paying awful close attention to Dennis shoots at first. Tyler Marson, the big first baseman, swinging on deck. He'd love to get a chance here with runners in scoring position, but no such luck as Bortz bends the breaking ball in for strike three. So Bedhauser strikes out to end the inning and a very important development for Portage. After they score three runs, they shut down Ellsworth at the bottom of the first. Top of the second coming up, Division II State Championship game. Portage three, Ellsworth nothing. Breeze blowing the branches around outside Fox City Stadium. Boy, what a beautiful facility and a great venue for our 65th annual WIAA State Baseball Tournament, the spring edition. Just announced plans to put another 5.8 million into this venue. It's gonna be the home here for a couple more years at least. And the leadoff hitter for Portage in the second inning. Adam Walls lines a single to center. Good start for the Warriors. Second straight inning. Portage gets the leadoff man on against Schroeder. You would think they'll ask Green to try to bring him along with a bunt here. But that $5.8 million renovation plan includes, I'm told, suites in a second row for the media, a year round banquet hall. Can't imagine how this could get much better, but with five million bucks, you can really do some stuff. I would think the Brewers might want something underneath hitting cages and those kinds of things for their minor leaguers. The Midwest League team of the Brewers is the Wisconsin Timber Rattlers. Yep. And the Timber Rattlers, every year we have to give them so much credit for 
being so cooperative. This is uh, Green to left. That ball caught out there by the Ellsworth left fielder, Travis Kroll, for the first out. And now the ball gets away, and well, in the confusion, Walls will take second. Well, that was just sloppy. That, yeah. Steve Block going to the mound to try to settle the, the troops down. But give Waltz credit for recognizing he could take a base in the midst of the confusion yeah. after a routine fly ball to left. So that costs Ellsworth 90 feet as you see Waltz now standing at second. One out. Now Jordan Walker up. Came up empty on that one, strike one. Well, it's interesting when a guy named Jordan wears number 23. And that's what Jordan Walker's wearing on the back of his ported uniform. One strike. And again, Schroeder gets the 12-6 in there. 0-2. That thing had some bite on it. by Walker. That breaking ball has not been kind to Jordan Walker today. <laughs> he got caught looking at it in the first day. One two now to Walker. Drives it again and stays high. Two and two. This is the first trip to state in baseball for Ellsworth. Second trip for Portage. The only other time they were here, 2006, and they won the Division II championship in Portage under head coach Mike Hemming. And another line drive hit the center. Walls will be held up at third. Ball bounces away from the cutoff man, but Schroeder's there to handle it. And Walker's base hit makes it first and third with one out. Portage like they did last night against Radu, hit the ball pretty hard. Yeah, they come out hacking. Last night they ended up with eight hits. Munch three hits, two errors, and four hit batsmen in the first inning to score four times. Four hits already here in an inning and a third against Ellsworth. Now the big guys come up. Travis Hamilton first. Fake throw to third. And Nothing doing on that play. Hamilton walked and scored in the first as Portage scored its three runs in inning number one. Now an RBI chance for Hamilton. He's so effective in that department as a run producer for Portage. Schroeder, you'd figure, would be very careful with Hamilton, then Jordahl next, but with two on and only one out, you can only be so careful. Good cut right back this way and just above our broadcast location. Having a fourth grade teacher at Portage. Also, is girls basketball varsity assistant coach. So he's. I have never well, seen a more active third base he's, coach. Yeah. <laughs> he's like the Peyton Manning of third base coaches. Yeah. You never know if he's doing anything or saying anything, but he, he gets into it. 1 1 pitch. Hamilton, big cut and a strike. Hey, 1 and 2 now to Travis Hamilton. He is passionate about what he does, that's for sure, Mike Hemming. Throw to first, chasing Walker back. And they are a fun-loving group, too, assistant coach Jim Walker. He, he's Mr. Practical Joke and 
It's a contest between the players and Walker on who can spring the best practical jokes. Hamilton fights that one off from the foul ball. One and two. Do you have any for instances? Uh, there was uh, there was an article in the Portage paper about uh, plastic forks and, <laughs> and just weird stuff on his lawn. And, you know they want to they want to dump the the ice bath on him today. That's that's kind of one of their big goals. But of course you'd have to win the game first. I can probably come up with a for instance or two if you give me a second. It's always interesting to hear about pranks. <laughs> yeah. You can always pack a few of them away for future reference. Now Hamilton battling back from one and two as the count goes three and two. Again, spoiled by Travis Hamilton. And another fake to third. Everybody's close to their bases, though, and Stays three and two. Top of the second inning here. Portage trying to add to a three nothing lead. Lost him. Brady Schroeder's in a big kettle of fish right now. I tell you, bases loaded, one out, and Mike. Jordahl coming to the plate. Yeah, he's not the guy you like to see up there with the bases filled. Hey, center and right, John Tank get three. Again, being a big left-handed hitting catcher, you remind me of Joe Mauer. Two. Mauer's about that size. And Jordahl, even though he's continuing to grow, wants to stay playing the catching position. That's a long throw. Walls, he make him make it. Here's a for instance on uh, assistant coach Jim Walker, Dan Larson from the Porter's newspaper. Monday morning he woke up, Santa was coaching first base, a witch was playing second and various other holiday lawn ornaments were organized to resemble a small scale baseball field beyond the second story patio of his home. <laughs> How about that? He's had toilet paper littering his trees, plastic forks stuck in the ground, and more Christmas trees decorating his yard than a grocery store parking lot in December. Right, Stan Larson. <laughs> and Mike Jordahl says the goal is to get water and dump it on Coach Walker if they win it. <laughs> and now Jordahl stays alive one and two. There's Mike Hemming. He probably just goes, yeah, whatever. <laughs> Those guys are going to do what they're going to do. Porter's located about 40 minutes north of Madison, the county seat of Columbia County. And Jordahl, did he hold up? They're going to no, check down to no. third. He held up. The left fielder Kroll thought he went, but he's way out there. About 300 feet away. So two and two now the count. Let's take another look. Very close. Two two pitch strike three that one he got. So a big out here in the second inning as Jordahl goes down looking. Porter just had their chances here in the first two innings to really put up some numbers. And Jordahl certainly the guy you wanted at the plate. And just as they got to Ryan Radu early last night, they'd love to get to another outstanding pitcher, Brady Schroeder, early today. There is no bullpen activity for Ellsworth. Oh, the Panthers seem to have a great deal of confidence in Schroeder. 
Well, it's set up well for them to have Schroeder pitch in the state championship game, no doubt. Georgia has got him there last night with a complete game five hitter, and now Schroeder is trying to pitch Ellsworth to the title, but he's in a bit of a sticky situation right now. Bases loaded, two out. Owen won the count to Adam Borch. Remember what he did last time? He ripped an RBI single, and that one's under the glove of Matter at third into left field. Bobbled in left by Travis Kroll. Two runs are going to score for Portage, and the Warriors cash in. It's 5 1. We've seen that before from Boards. A big two run, two out single, though. Matter tried to get over, but he just couldn't get his glove down to get it. And Bortz is having a big day. Not only is he pitching well, one inning of shutout ball, he's got a couple of RBI hits. Five nothing Portage. Now oh, Matt Bortz tries to keep the inning alive with two out. Warriors with runners at first and second. Hamilton at second and now that's that move that uh, Devin Thompson comes in to run for Bortz. Bortz a team obviously would love to play from ahead when they're at state. Had a 4 nothing or 4 one lead after one last night. Now it's 5 nothing today top of the second. And that'll get to right field another hit. Matt Bortz, they're going to try and score Hamilton. Throw doesn't get there. Hamilton scores. 6 nothing Portage. Now Bortz just went with it to right field, and he drives in another run. Portage doing what they did to Fox River or Fox Valley Lutheran last night. Shocking him coming out of the gate with a heavy hitting attack. Finally, some bullpen activity starting up. For Ellsworth. Oh, he waited on that one well. He found the hole between first and second. Bozine now the hitter. He had a two run single, big two run single in the first. Devin, get that secondary to score on a hit. Dine's a good looking athlete. 6 3, 170. Bounced foul outside a third. It's like he can run. Hey, battle at 02 again, boys. He was one for two last night. Scored a run. One for one today. Yeah. Both of these teams had big scares on their tournament trail. Ellsworth. In the regionals, beat Duran five, four, and in nine innings. Schroeder pitched that game all nine innings, struck out 17. Also tied the game in the seventh as Ellsworth was down to their last ups with a run scoring sacrifice for Schroeder. And we told you about Portage's close call against Lodi in the sectional final. A come from behind seven, six win also in nine innings. Signed. Downs this one foul. Mike Henning grabs it. And then he'll toss it to Mitch Matter and he'll get it back to the pitcher. Count one and two now. Um, the Portage batter, Bozine. Thompson at second. Matt Bortz at first. Oh, they've got him picked off. And they got him. Well, there was a little hesitation. Thompson was clearly wandering from the bag. and. There was a hesitation on Schroeder's part, but the throw got there to get the runner, and that's how the inning ends. But just like the first inning, Portage scores three in the second. Six runs on six hits through two innings for the Warriors. They lead Ellsworth 6-0 as we go to the bottom of the second.
Well, they just played jump around here at Fox City Stadium, and the Portage fans, well, <laughs> Yeah, they didn't need much encouragement. Yeah, they're all hyped up to begin with. Their team's up 6 nothing. bottom of inning number two. Earlier today, Coleman won the D4 title. Beat Johnson Crick 20 to 11. Prescott beat Park D4 three and eight innings. And another middle border conference team playing Portage right here. Gonna have to rally from six down. At around six o'clock, the division one title is expected to be resolved. Bayport plays Sun Prairie. Again, the tentative start time, about six. We're about, what, a half hour behind schedule? Yeah, about that. We were a lot more behind schedule before, yeah. but now so we're getting close. We might pick up some minutes. And again, the weather is held up. 2-1 the count to Tyler Marson is leading off the Ellsworth second. Marson, Jorikas, and Matter, the scheduled three. To start here for Ellsworth against Adam Bortz, the Portage pitcher. And ball four, leadoff walk to Marson. James Georgicus, the designated hitter, now up. Well, again, we saw the Coleman game where Johnson Creek started walking that leadoff hitter and came back to bite him in a big way. Yeah, you just can't do that. And because that leadoff walk, there's going to be activity in the Portage bullpen again. Might be the same kid who was there throwing before the pitch, the first pitch was thrown. Well, maybe Adam Bort sees that and says, oh, I'm going to settle down here. <laughs> it's going to be out. There you see the action of the bullpen. If you haven't seen state baseball, state high school baseball from Fox City Stadium for a couple of years, you remember they used to have the dugouts cut out, which has now been enclosed and uh, bleacher seats added. I'm assuming that is Anthony Korsh. Or everybody else that has pitched for them is a player in the lineup. Saw where the bullpens used to be, and now tables and chairs seating out there. Nice, nice place to watch a baseball game. But the bullpen's now on the warning track in the field of play. Outside the line, obviously. But this one's popped up, and it'll be back out of play. You're getting closer to us. Yeah. They haven't found us all week yet. Nope. We'll get there. So with the bullpens uh, so close to the action, the teams will bring a third person down there to flag any foul balls hit in the direction of the uh, pitcher warming up. One and two, the count to Georgicus. And another foul to the Portage cheering section behind the Warriors' dugout. Because they throw on the warning track here, and there is no mound. Again, that's a provision to high school, for the high school tournament only. The pro teams use the full pens out behind the outfield. There are mounds in, the, in those pens. James Georgicus, a first team all conference selection of the Middle Border Conference this season, and he waves at strike three. So Bortz with a nice job to get Georgicus swinging. Second punch out for the big right hander. And it goes to third baseman Mitch Matter. That was not a hearty swing there by no. Georgicus. Matter starts out with the ball high. Again, that's going to be a little intimidating when you see that big right-hander coming at you from the side, in particular if you're a right-handed hitter. Mitch Matter had a good night last night. Two out of three of the runs batted in. He's a 439 hitter. He was honorable mention all-conference in baseball and also ran some cross-country for Ellsworth. One of five seniors on this Panther team. That one hits the target for Bortz. And two and one the count. Portage with three in the top of the first, three more in the top of the second. Six nothing Warriors.
Matter waving that bat. Bortz fires and hits the bullseye. Two and two. Marson, the runner at first, he walked to lead off the second. Georgica struck out, and now we're two and two on Mitch Matter. Got him looking. Well, I'd tell you, Bortz is piling up the strikeouts now. Yeah, he, he really is for a guy that looks to be on the ropes half the time. He seemed to rally. And <laughs> See, they start a guy warming up, and he just strikes out people. Boy. <laughs> He's got 41 strikeouts in 27 innings, and after tonight, now 44 in 28 innings. Mm, ooh, look out. A flyby. Flynn had to duck out of the way of that one. Chandler Flynn is the Ellsworth second baseman. Chandler had a tough night last night. Yeah. He's over three, got struck out three times. He also walked once. And now he has a count of one and one as he's facing Adam Bortz for the first time. Pull the trigger, Flynn, and he looked at strike two. Long way to go, bottom of the second inning, six nothing Portage. Here's the one two to Chandler Flynn. Fouled off. Good cut by Flynn, but fouled it back to the screen. Dan Giese, the Ellsworth right fielder is on deck, hoping to get a chance to hit here in this bottom of the second inning for Ellsworth. Ports from the stretch. Missed with a ball. Two and two to the count. Two down here in the second. Lots of twos on the board. Ellsworth located just 30 miles from the Twin Cities, the county seat of Pierce County in West Central Wisconsin. I guess that'd be more Northwest Wisconsin, I guess more North Central. Yeah. Yeah, that's right there. Now three and two as Flynn is having a at bat that's challenging Adam Borch, the Portage pitcher. Marson will be off with the pitch at first, and down goes Flynn swinging. One, two, three after a leadoff walk, and three strikeouts for Adam Borch in the inning. Not bad. Ellsworth fans trying to shake up their team down six nothing as Portage comes to bat at the top of the third against Ellsworth pitcher Brady Schroeder. It'll be seven, eight, and nine for Portage. Zine, Ferrari, Waltz. Zine quickly 0 and 1 at the plate. 
Portage with three in each of the first two innings. And another strike. So shorter quickly ahead of Zion 0 and 2. And strike three. Schroeder's had a few strikeouts as well. Yeah, in between a six hits and a few, quite a few walks. Well, that's, that's the rest of the story, isn't it? Four walks, six hits, four strikeouts. You saw the flinch by Zine and then the called strike, and you saw his reaction. Max Ferrari, the first baseman, now up. Ground that out to second his first time up. Schroeder goes to the big breaking ball and stays outside for ball one. That'll be foul right field side. Portage, we mentioned, just north of Madison. It's called Portage because of its unique geographical location between the Fox and Wisconsin rivers. Back in the day, the 1600s, trappers and explorers and fur traders used to portage their heavy packs and canoes between the Fox and the Wisconsin. I learned that last night. That's the term. Yeah. And there's a hard hit ball to short. Bedhauser fielding, throwing, got him. Good solid play by the Ellsworth shortstop, Jake Bedhauser. I just thought it was known as the home of the Portage Plumber. Oh, yeah. Remember that? When I first moved to the state. Back at Camp Randall. That, boy, that's what, 70s, 80s? Late 70s. Late 70s. The Portage Plumber. He was from Portage, wasn't he? I believe he was. Yeah, yes, that's right. I was always led to believe yeah. that. Yeah, sometimes. Hope it wasn't there. like a hodag, a so. mythical <laughs> character. I, I thought I saw the guy. No, no, the guy would come out of section Y or Z or whatever it was in the yeah. corner, and he had that that uh, furry helmet-looking yeah. hat. Good looking guy. Band would be playing. The Portage Plumber popped up in the infield. Marson says, "I got it," and he does to retire Waltz, and it's a one-two-three inning. For Brady Schroeder and Ellsworth. Now the Panthers have to figure out how to solve Portage pitcher Adam Bortz. We go to the bottom of the third. Portage still leading 6 0. Stylish laces for those players from Ellsworth. Now right, here we go with the Panthers coming up in the bottom of the third inning. They're in a bit of a hold, six nothing. They trail. Dan Giese up for the first time. He's the number nine hitter, the right fielder for Ellsworth. Brandon Volker and Dennis Schutz are coming up after that. Giese bounces it foul to third. You mentioned the Portage Plumber. The guy's name was Terry Westergaard. I, that I didn't know. Yeah, Terry Westergaard was a steam fitter from Portage. So he was kind of a plumber, I guess. Huh? Home games from 1976 to 1982. He'd come down to the fourth quarter, and Badger football wasn't very good back then. No, I mean, well, Dave McClain would argue yeah. with you. <laughs> and, and as the story goes, 
And there's strike three to Gizzi. After a winning season in 1981, the Portage Plumber disappeared, presumably because the games became more interesting. <laughs> kind of went off the room with Steve Bartman. Yeah, we, we, we've never right. heard for the Portage <laughs> Pro. Terry Westergaard. Brandon Volker now in for Ellsworth. We, we never hear from either Steve Bartman or the Portage Plumber. No, no. Strange, isn't it? Yeah. You never see him in the same place either. No. <laughs> Late swing by Volker, and he's able to follow it back. Bortz has fanned four in a row in five of the first two and a third innings, yet still hmm. that fella in the jacket's thrown in the bullpen. Yeah. <laughs> <Bortz>. <laughs> he's been busy. Yeah. But all Adam Bortz has done is hold Ellsworth in one hit through two and a third innings. Now it's one and two to Brandon Volker. Let's see if he checked his swing. Yes, nope. he did. Oh, no, he didn't. They check down to the first base umpire, and Ron Quirk rings him up. So Volker's down, and boy, I missed a strikeout here. Mr. Bortz is on a roll. Five in a row. Five strikeouts in a row for Adam Bortz. Now here's Dennis Schutz. That's a fair ball inside the line at third. Schutz has his second hit of the day. He'll turn first and pull into second with a two-out double. Good day going for Dennis Schutz, the center fielder for Ellsworth. Yeah, he has been the Ellsworth offense. He has both their hits. First time they've been a man to second base. Now here's Brady Schroeder. Number three hitter for Ellsworth. So the Panthers would love to get a run or two to start crawling back in this game. Schroeder fly ball to right his first time. Now to the dirt ball one. Well, we've talked about Portage. Did, did you know that Ellsworth is the cheese curd capital of Wisconsin? So well, you educated me last well, night on that, too. I, I'm a little surprised yeah, to hear that. So proclaimed by Governor Tony Earl in 1984. I'm surprised that hasn't been contested. Well, once you are, I don't think they can take it away. Well, yeah. Well, now, let me follow that up. The 11th annual Ellsworth Cheese Curd Festival is coming up June 22nd to the 24th. Well, that's next weekend. They've got a logo and everything. I bet they do. Very nice. Celebrating 150 years of Ellsworth. So that's next weekend. That's correct. Because we've got stuff to do this weekend. <laughs> yeah. I'll bet that's a good time. The Cheese Curd Festival. Oh, the ball gets away from Jordahl. That'll move the runner up to third. Yeah, those festivals usually are a good time. <laughs> or so I've been told. Yes. Well, now it's built up momentum and it's 11th year. It's going to be something special. Okay, so shoots now a third with two down. And Schroeder trying to find a way to get him in. 2 0 the count to the Ellsworth pitcher. Inside, 3-0. and Ellsworth fans, they're, they're not panicking yet. They're just enjoying some popcorn, it looks like. But they'll get a little more nervous as we move along here, currently in the third inning. Ball four. Second walk issued by Adam Bortz. Now here comes the shortstop, Jake Bedhauser, with runners at first and third and two down. It's only the third base runner in two and two thirds innings allowed by Adam Boards. Only, excuse me, fourth runner, two hits and two walks. And Jake Bedhauser takes ball one. Bedhauser struck out looking to end the first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Boy, he really yanked that. Well, look out, Brandon, our cameraman down there just outside the Portage dugout. Boy, he nimble. Yeah, hi. <laughs> Glad you're still with us. <laughs> you got to be heads up. Whether you're in the seating areas or whether you're working on the telecast. That ball gets on you in a hurry. One and one to Bedhauser. Trying to get Ellsworth on the board. Runner going from first. They'll throw through and safe at second with a stolen base is Schroeder. And they could use a hit. Get on the board. Mm -hmm. So Schroeder with a steal of second. Shoots, stays the runner at third, and now... Two runners in scoring position for Bedhauser. There are two out. Schroeder 10 of 11 in stolen base opportunities. Ellsworth's stolen 54 bases, so running, they will run, but the running game not as paramount to them as it is to other teams in this tournament that we have seen. Oh, and a beauty there for strike two. Bedhauser collects his thoughts. This is a big at bat in this game as Ellsworth tries to get back into it. 2-2 two, two now the count to Bedhauser. Fouled it off. Jake's a 492 hitter, so he's their guy with two homers, 25 RBIs. And two runners in scoring position. This. Look at that. Dave Anderson caught the ball. What doesn't that man do? The executive director of the WIA. He'll be telling that story for weeks. Yeah. <laughs> Strike three looking. And Adam Bortz is turning into Nolan Ryan. The last six outs have been via the strikeout. Bedhauser took a step toward first, thought it was ball four, but Bortz got the call. And he that dropped that dirt ball in the outside corner. Mm. So Bortz gets out of his toughest jam with a dame. He's only allowed two hits through three innings. Portage coming up, bottom of the third, leading 6 nothing. Portage comes up in the top of the fourth inning. Leading 6 0. They'll go to the top of the order with Brady Green, Jordan Walker, Travis Hamilton. Do up. First, we'll have a conference between Brady Green. Actually, uh, Steve Block came out uh, for a discussion with first base umpire Ron Quirk, so that gave Green and his head coach, Mike Hemming, a chance to discuss things down the third baseline. So now we're ready to go. Green comes up for the third time today. Walked, stole a base, scored a run in the first, and then hit a fly ball to the left in his two trips. Take strike one from Brady Schroeder. Two innings that Green batted in. Portage scored three runs. Yeah. It's been a harbinger of things to come, and he's on again with a hit by pitch. That didn't get him by much, but it nicked his uniform, and there goes Green down to first. And he was hit by a pitch last night. Came around to score. Let's see where it got him. He was done the sleeve, didn't he? Yeah. 
Yeah, they're gonna get hit, get hit in the sleeve. Action in the Ellsworth bullpen. Isaac Hines, who was warming earlier, he's gonna go down and take some tosses down the right field side once again. Hines warmed up a couple of times yesterday, but did not make an appearance on the There goes the runner. And Green is gonna be, got him. Oh, the tag, I think it might have clipped him in the ankle. Delayed call, they wanted to make sure that he still had the ball in his love, I think, and Volker throws out Green trying to steal second. Let's look at it again. Green didn't have the best of jumps, but I thought he was gonna get in. Oh, oh look at that, right in the foot. Second base umpire Tom Cameron is right there to make the call. So it looked like Green was past the tag, but in fact, he was tagged in the foot. So one out now. Walker with nobody on. And that hit him. That time he tried to jump out of the way, hit him in the back foot. So the second hit by a pitch of the inning. And the sixth in the tournament. Six portage batter to be hit by a pitch in two days. And that may be it for Schroeder. Steve Block coming out for a discussion on the mound. Steve Block is eighth season as head coach at Ellsworth. 22nd season overall. He's got over 300 career wins. Well, he doesn't look like he's going to take him out. He tried it out there. Yeah. So he asked for time and act like he was going to make a move. And then he picked up his gate. Got out there, and this is looks like a chat about believing in yourself and motivation as opposed to mechanics. And one final word for his catcher, Brandon Volker. <laughs> Great expression there from head coach Block. He was as excited as his kids last night as he was waving yeah. around third base. They upset Racine St. Catharines five to one. Travis Hamilton with a runner at first and the ball skips by Volker off his glove. That'll send Jordan Walker to second. Pitch was outside and Volker couldn't corral it. So an extra base for Jordan Walker. One out here for Portage, trying to build to a 6 nothing lead. Ellsworth in the state tournament final for the first time. And I don't think anybody's had a better time than Steve Block. Right. And pulled to first, Tyler Marson makes the play. He'll touch first, unassisted to first is the put out on Hamilton. And Walker's able to get to third. Here comes Mike Jordan, all the Portage catcher. We saw Dave Anderson make a catch of a foul ball. He certainly led an eventful year in the WIAA. A couple of state tournament changed venues. Of course, the one that got all the publicity was the girls' basketball tournament moving from Madison to Green Bay in a two year trial. And a lot of people don't realize that the summer baseball tournament also changes locations. Next month, instead of it being an eight team event in Stevens Point in Buco Park, It'll be a four-team event on the campus of Concordia University in Mequon. There's Dave, There's Dave Anderson, executive director. Well, he was he was in the paper all the time there for a few weeks with that basketball move. Yeah. Hey, make it happen on a pass ball. Here, let's go. Fortunately, the, for Madison, the WIA and the Get your secondary and see that Madison Convention and Visitors Bureau and the University of Wisconsin able to continue the boys basketball tournament. And I'm sure Green Bay is gonna wrap themselves around the girls basketball tournament. They would have loved to get both the boys and the girls, but they will have the girls starting next March. And it'll be at the Rush Center and this size building of six, 7,000 will hold for basketball. And that's Jordahl swinging at strike three. Second time he's struck out of the game. His last two times up. 
nothing doing for Portage at the top of the fourth. We go to the bottom of inning number four, Division II Championship. No change in the score, Portage six, Ellsworth nothing. Overcast skies in Grand Chute, but again, the rains have held off. Filtered sunshine, comfortable temperatures, a bit of a breeze, as you can see, blowing from the right field corner to the left field corner. We have some changes in the portage order. Starting with a new pitcher, Alex Dobbins. So Bort strikes the last, records his last seven outs of strikeouts when he leaves the game. He's replaced by Dobbins, a senior five. 6'2", 235, so he's another big kid. Alex had the year 4-1 and one with a 375 earned run average. This is his 11th game. He's fourth out of the bullpen. He's thrown a complete game in 35 and a third innings. He's allowed 34 hits, 20 earned runs. He's walked 30 and struck out 24. First batter he'll face is Tyler Marson, the first baseman for Ellsworth. The other change involves the former pitcher Adam Bortz. He's at first base now where he played the entire semifinal game against Fox Valley Lutheran yesterday. And Fiore, he's out of the game, correct? Correct. Oh, Dobbins throws hard. And Gets throws a quickly. Diff different look than Bortz. Yeah. And Boy. that's the that's the idea, I'm sure. And he gets the ball and he goes here. Shakes off the sign. Now he likes it. Here comes the one two. Just missed the outside corner. Two and two. Well, you got boards through the order one time plus three hitters. Mm -hmm. So this will be a new look. Well, that one jammed the hitter Marson and the shortstop Hamilton will throw him out. Tough little play as ball seemed to take forever to get out to the shortstop Hamilton, but he made the play one down. Oh, that was a chopper over the mound. And Hamilton, who's been a solid player, makes the play. Marson kind of had that alligator arm swing as the, he decided at the last minute to swing at the pitch, and that kind of threw off his timing. And he's a ground out victim to start the fourth inning for Ellsworth. Dobbins and Bortz, Adam Bortz was the combination that got Portage through the sectional semifinal against Richland Center. Bortz and Dobbins combined for a one hitter and a 4 0 win over the Hornets. And that's the combination Mike Hemmings looking for again today as Adam Bortz started and Alex Dobbins relieves him in the top of the bottom of the fourth inning. James Georgicus pitched yesterday, designated hitting today. Georgicus struck out his first time up, now one for five in the two day tournament. And Jordan has to reach out, stride the zone, outside the strike zone to grab that one. So one and two now the count to James Georgicus. Hit him. Got him on the forearm. So on a one-two pitch, 
Dobbins hits Georgicus. So thank you very much, say Ellsworth. And now Mitch Matter, the third baseman, steps in. But they got to start digging and managing some of these yeah. base runners. Up two in the third, one in the first. They only have two hits, but they've had base runners. Yep. We're halfway through the game. Yeah. Yeah, it's not late, but it's getting later. When you're down by six, it's getting late. Yeah. Oh, wow, that hurts. Matter fouled it right off his front foot. That dog's barking. Oh, I guess it's off his knee. A lot of guys will wear protection of some sort. Either a shin guard, well, usually a shin guard off that lead leg. But watch where this hits. Ah, boy, that was above his knee just slightly. Oh, man. <laughs> tomorrow, yeah, that's smart. Tomorrow morning, he's going to wake up with a big old knot in his thigh. <laughs> Shouldn't laugh. <laughs> <laughs> And he'll stay in there and continue the at bat. He's in a hole now, 0 2. Matters are second leading hitter at 439. Couple of hits yesterday. And stays alive with a foul back to the screen. According to the rankings, Portage, the 10th ranked team in Division II, while Ellsworth received honorable mention. That was the Division II rankings. Yeah, if you went by the rankings, though, last stats are oh, results boy. are both big upsets. This has been. The tournament has not been kind to the top seeds. Although Sun Prairie will play in the Division I final a little later. Coleman, the third ranked team in Division IV, won their title. And there's a base hit by Matter to left. Just past the outstretched glove of Matt Borch, the Portage third baseman. Third hit for the Panthers. And they've got something going here with one out in the fourth. First and second with one down. And he just kind of threw the bat at the ball and lined it to left for his clean single. Chandler Flynn's had a tough tournament. He's got to turn that around right here. Boy, and you said it, bro. Ellsworth has to take advantage of an opportunity like this. Second baseman Chandler Flynn. Didn't catch up with that fastball, 0-2. Yeah, Dobbin just threw that one past him. He does have a little more zip than yeah. his predecessor. But it doesn't appear to have as much bite of his breaking ball. Steve, Steve Block having a word with Chandler Flynn. This may just be a motivational talk, too. Yep. Again, Flynn struck out all four preceding point appearances and is behind on the count here. Alex Dobbin seems to be a no nonsense kind of pitcher. He just kind of says, all right. Here's my fastball, I'll try and hit it. Flynn hasn't been able to, and he's down two strikes. Dobbins stretches. And the high heat got him. Throw back to second in his center field. Let's see if Georgicus is going to try and advance. He does to third. So second and third is also Matter gets to second. So runners in scoring position now. Chandler Flynn whiffs again, but in trying to strike him out, throw him out, when they're throwing behind the rider, Georgicus, Jordan threw it in the center field. Yep, so that'll be an error on the Portage catcher. And Dan Giese comes up with an RBI opportunity. Couple of them out there. And he bounces it to the right side. Green with a tough play. Threw it away. Georgicus in. Here comes Matter, and Ellsworth finally cracks the scoreboard. They're still trailing, but now it's 6-2. Tough chance yeah. for Green. This ball's not hit hard at all. And Green tried to make a real tough play. If it works, you look marvelous. 
that doesn't like this. You got a man on second base and two runs that come in. So it'll be an infield hit. The play was close at first. Green threw it a little wide of Adam Bortz, the first baseman. They'll also give an error to the second baseman. I think that's right. So Giese will get one RBI, I would assume. And then the second one run scored on the throwing error by Brady Green. So some life out of the Ellsworth crowd now. Big gust of wind picked up. <laughs> Blew all the papers around our broadcast area. Brandon Volker is the hitter for Ellsworth, and the count is 0-1. Yeah, we're not much, we're not very smart with those papers blow around. No. no. Paperweight hasn't been invented yet where we're from. We don't need gusts of wind. No. So Volker now with Giese in scoring position after the single and advancing on the air. It lays down a bunt. Oh, that kicked off the grass portion of the infield, took a sharp right turn, and then went foul. Boys, that might have been something for Volker. Brandon, leadoff hitter. Hit a fly ball to the right to start the game, or start Ellsworth, I should say, in the bottom of the first. And then Volker struck out his second time up. Steve Block patrolling the third base coaching area. Strike three looking. Volker down on strikes for the second time. Well, Bortz did a nice job of striking out Ellsworth batters, and now Dobbins in his first inning of work strikes out two Ellsworth batters again. There you see the excited Alex Dobbins. His team still leading it 6-2. Adam Bortz digging in. He's facing Brady Schroeder to lead off the Portage. Fifth inning, top of the fifth. 6-2. Portage is still riding those two three-run innings early. Now ball to third, Matter stays with it. Long throw across, gets Bortz, and that's the first out of the fifth. Yeah, Schroeder gives up three in each of the first two innings, and he hasn't a lot of hits since. Yeah. He's hit a couple hit guys. Hit a couple guys, yeah. Nice play by Matter to throw out Bortz. Now here's Bortz number two. Matt Bortz for Portage. Ball one to Bortz. Matt Bortz, first team all conference. Again, the winning pitcher for Portage yesterday, and he takes a strike to even the count one and one. In the sectional final, he started the game against Lodi, went four and a third innings. Alex Dobbins relieved him. Dobbins 
just came in relief for Portage today. And then Matt Bortz came back in and pitched the final three and two thirds and got the victory. See a lot of re-entry for runners. There's a case where you saw the pitcher start and come back. And it worked out. 2-2 to Bortz. He took a good look at that and watched it go by for ball three. Matt Bortz is an RBI single. I was back on the second. And this one's lifted in the air. When pushing it towards center, look out. Somebody's got to take charge, and Dennis shoots does. Yeah, that had danger written all over it. <laughs> but shoots made it. Yeah. something good happen. He did take charge and avoided contact with any of his teammates as they all converge right here. Yeah. That is shoots the sophomore. You saw him calling everybody off at the very last and he went to the ground to make the out. Ozine now up. He has a two run single in the first. Portage with three in the first, three in the second. Ellsworth answered with two in the fourth. Panthers still trailing 6-2. They dearly want to hold Portage at that six-run mark. Here's a fly ball to right. Dan Giese fighting the sun and the wind. And he makes the catch, and it's a quick fifth inning for Brady Schroeder. Round out, fly out, fly out. Ellsworth fans trying to get the Panthers going. They'll be coming up at the bottom of the fifth, trailing 6-2. <laughs> Ellsworth got two back in the bottom of the fourth. Now we're in the bottom of the fifth. And some of their big hitters are coming up. Dennis Schutz, Brady Schroeder, and Jake Bedhauser. Yeah. Face Alex Dobbins, who's now working in relief on the mound for Portage. Schutz has had a great day at the plate, two for two. Single and a double. And he is three for three as that falls in front of Adam Waltz, the right fielder for Portage. Which goes the other way. He's had a good tournament. Boy, you look, you look at his uh, hit chart. He's got one to center. He's got one to left, one to right. Yep. How are you going to defend that? You can't. Obviously, three for three. Here's Schroeder. Again, Ellsworth needs to chip away. You get two last inning to cut the lead to four. Meet of the lineup here. Double play ball back to the mound. A second for one. Oh, and he dropped it on the transfer. Oh, my. Oh, they'll call him out at second, right? I think he signals safe. He singles safe. Let's see it again. Nope. But they're gonna. Yeah. Now shoots is gonna go back to the dugout. Oh, I see. Signal that he juggled the ball in the yeah. transfer. 
because you know his next call was out and then he did the juggle uh, motion here it is well he's mm -hmm. called out yep shoots was trying to talk second base umpire Tom Cameron went into the call but to no avail so Schroeder's now the runner at first shoots out at second and Jake Bedhauser up tough day for Jake and solid in the field but he struck out looking twice those were both against Adam Bortz when he was pitching for Portage coming up next the division one final supposed to start at six I don't think it will I don't think we're going to be done in time for a six o'clock start but it's Sun Prairie and Bayport which should yeah, be a good matchup sure should for the D1 title shouldn't be too far away from six o'clock I think 10 to 5 right now. Ed Hauser. Oh, he took a mighty swing of that one. That's 2 and 1. You must think Alex Dobbins is going to mow him down, but if you think we can get a 6 o'clock start out of that <laughs> D1 tilt. The glass is half full. Those regal looking fellows in the purple uniforms have other ideas. <laughs> Princely, dare I say. It's Prince's birthday last week. Oh, was it? Yep. Oh. Happy birthday. Strike. Three and two now. We Minneapolis natives follow one another's birthday. <laughs> yeah. I'm sure Prince takes. Well, he was formerly known as Prince, right? Yeah, well, that's yeah. true. <laughs> <laughs> Three and two, the count to Bedhauser. Runner not going, and this is fisted to third where Matt Bortz picks it up, throws, and gets the out at first. Nice play by Bortz. Smart play, too. And Dobbins has done a nice job getting through the meat of the Ellsworth order after the leadoff single by yeah. Schutz. He gets the two big boys, and Schroeder on a potential double play ball. They still get one, and then... Bethauser is retired on the ground to third. Ball wasn't hit nearly hard enough to think about getting Schroeder at second. He nope. was, uh, got a good jump on the 3 2 pitch. Okay, now two down. Here's Tyler Marson. So Dobbins isn't quite out of danger quite yet. Schroeder's at second, two out. Marson's a pretty good hitter. Holds his bat high above his shoulders. And the ball bounces off the catcher, Jordahl, who... I think Jordahl's hurt. Yeah, he's limping as he gets up off the ground. That must have got a piece outside the equipment of Mike Jordahl. I think Dobbins recognized that right away because yeah. he went after the ball really right after it struck the catcher. Normally, I think you'd figure the catcher would track it down. But let's see what it hits Jordahl there. I think... Right just, above the... Uh, just above shin, the shin guard yes. in that... Uh, left thigh area. So Jordahl will take a moment to try and regroup. Marson's still at the plate. The count is 2-0 and on him. Anyway, a good play by Dobbins yeah. to go after that ball. Otherwise, Schroeder might have been able to sure. score from second. Because obviously Dobbins couldn't get the ball and cover home with Jordahl ailing. Jordan's a big kid. Again, I mentioned he is the size of Joe Maurer. There is the talk that part of Maurer's injury problems is the fact that he is bigger than most catchers and takes foul tips and sure. plays like that in areas that most catchers don't. This one's chopped a short. Tough hop. It eats up Hamilton. Throws. Still got him at first. Wow. Talk about sticking with it. Travis Hamilton bobbled it and made a strong throw across to still get Marson going down the line. Hamilton put something on this throw. I didn't think he had a chance when he uh, bobbles it. Absolutely. Comes in. That's a tough hop. Stays with it. Watch this cannon. Boy, oh, that's a close play, but the umpire is right there. And Ron Quirk makes the call out at first. Five innings complete. Portage six, Ellsworth two.
Mike, keep us moving around. That'll stiffen up. Here we go to the top of the sixth inning for Portage. Alex Dobbins, who took over on the mound, hits in the number eight spot in the Portage batting order. So Dobbins up for the first time today. Action in the Portage bullpen. Travis Hamilton, the shortstop, who just got that strong throw for the last out of the fifth, is warming up in the bullpen. He, maybe we'll see him on the mound. In any case, Dobbins is at the plate, and he fouls that one off two and one. Bob Brainerd just brought us breaking news if you're watching us online. Well, we keep around. Portage Police Chief Ken Manthe announces that the Portage High School baseball team will be returning to the city between 7 and 7.30 with a police and fire escort. The escort will meet the team at the Highway 33 East Wayside by the Fox River. The team will come into town on Cook Street. There's a foul ball. Hit the batter, but... Uh, no, yeah, I think he's saying the ball hit the ground. Hit the ground, yeah, okay. It wasn't a foul tip. Ellsworth's saying it was strike three. But Alex Dobbins will get another swing. He's four for 28 in the senior year. Okay, so again, the police escort will meet the team at the Highway 33 East Wayside by the Fox River. It's coming up later tonight. Win or lose in Portage. Thanks, Bob. Mind you, it's a big deal in these towns. It's in the title game. It's Strike to three to Dobbins. Nice tradition. Yeah. That's fun. That's something you remember forever. Yeah. Here's a look at the third strike on Dobbins. And I'll bet there may be similar goings on yeah. in Coleman right now. Is <laughs> they brought home the hardware in Division Four, and they might be getting to Coleman. Right about right now. Right about the, now. He Johnson Crick, 20 to 12. Adam Walls, the hitter for Portage. Takes strike one. Wait or night in Prescott. It'll be a longer drive to Prescott. Yeah. But the fire engines could be out there uh, about dusk. Yeah, yeah. You know, it doesn't matter when you get there. A lot of times those parades are going to go on no matter what. Walls grounds to third. Matter throws across to Martian for the out. Prescott beat Parkview 4-3 in an exciting inning game to win the Division Three title. There's Mike Matter, or Mitch Matter, excuse me. Yale's were third baseman. Yeah, good week. And now top of the order, left-handed hitting Brady Green up for the fourth time today. That hit him. Hit him again. Well, that's the second time in a row he's been hit by a pitch. That one got a little more of him than the last one did. Schroeder going after Ryan Redoux's record of hitting a guy four times in the game. He's now within one. Of course, Redoux did it in one inning last night. But yeah. <laughs> we have learned that four is the record. Michael Place of Platteville did it in 2006. Redoux did it last night. And Boy, these Portage guys, they... They stand right in there, don't they? Brady Green's going to have a few <laughs> ice bags on him for the, when he's on that fire engine later on. <laughs> maybe they'll just turn the hose on him. Well, maybe. <laughs> Here's Jordan but Walker. He's a threat to run there, and yeah. they can use an insurance run up four in the sixth inning. He stole a base in the first and then was caught stealing in the fourth. But you're right, he's not afraid to take a chance on those base paths. He had two stolen bases last night. Two outs up 6-2. What the heck? And Schroeder's very well aware of that, and he's chased him back a couple of times with throws to first. That always gets a reaction from the crowd. Bob Brandon will be joining us after the game with a visit with today's sports hero. Who will it be? Well, right now, Got to think Adam Bort's got Adam a pretty Bortz good chance. Is, He'll yeah, tower he, over Bob. He, He's a big he, uh, guy. Yeah, the leader in the clubhouse, I believe, is Adam Bortz. Well, you could ask him how tall he really is. Since yeah. That 6'9 is accurate. Be interesting to see how Bob Brainerd matches up against the 6'5. Brainerd claims he's 6'4, but that's what it says in the program, so you never know. Uh oh. Ooh, Green had taken a lean towards second, but scampers back in time. Oh, he. 
Schroeder is really conscious of that runner over at first. Don't forget about the hitter, Jordan Walker. One more throw over. Portage hasn't had a hit against Schroeder since the second inning. In fact, Green's two hit batters and Jordan Walker's hit batters. There goes Green. And here's the throw, and Green will win the battle. Stolen base. But those two hit batsmen are the only base runners Portage has had <laughs> since the uh, three run second inning. So all those throws over to first still couldn't prevent Green from swiping second. Walker now at the plate, the count two and one. Outside, nope, called strike. Two and two. Wind's picked up a little bit again. Blowing from right to left. Fake throw to second, Green back. Chandler Flynn, the second baseman, trying to sneak behind Green. Walker to short in the hole and off the heel of the glove of Bedhauser. Here comes Brady Green to score. 7 2 Portage. Brady Green's speed creates that run. That's a big insurance run for Portage, who now it leads by five. Bedhauser has this over again. I think he's going to knock the ball yeah. down instead of try for the backhand and stab and to try to throw Walker out. That's going to be a tough play to throw him out. He's got to knock the ball down and keep him in the infield. But it's easy for me to say. It's a bang-bang decision by a good shortstop. Portage will take the two-out hit. They are up by five again. So Walker drives in a run. Three RBIs for Adam Bortz, two for Bo Zine, and RBIs also for Matt Bortz and now Jordan Walker. 7-2 Warriors. Hamilton now up. He went around and couldn't check up, so. That'll be an 0-2 count now on Travis Hamilton with Jordan Walker, the runner at first. Walker's put together a nice day offensively. He's been on three times with a couple of hits and now an RBI. So Portage finally gets to Schroeder again. With run number seven. Hot shot. Boy, that ate up Tyler Marson at first. Got a glove on it, but couldn't get out of the way of it. That was tore his glove off. That wow. ball was smoked. No kidding. I mean, that literally hits him in the glove, didn't it? But it was hit literally. so hard he yeah. couldn't hold on. Boy, Hamilton just continues to pound Here. the ball. Let's see if we can follow this BB. I think it hit yeah. him right in the glove. It hit him right in the glove. No, no, no doubt about that. I think call it an air. My goodness. Well, excuse me? I'd already written down single. There's no doubt it hit him right in the glove, but there's no doubt it was also hit very hard. <laughs> that was completely self-defense. All right. Now Mike Hemming's team with a big spark here in the sixth. One run is in. Runners at first and second. Walker at second, Hamilton at first. And now here's Mike Jordahl. They throw back and nobody was there to get the throw at second base. And now the roll gets by again into the dugout and the run will score. My goodness. That really hurts if you're Ellsworth. That is a big mess. Look at the joy in the Portage dugout. I mean, not just two unforced errors. Yeah. As Volker tried to throw behind the runner in second, nobody covered. And that was a play on. Neither the second base, but Flynn or the shortstop, Bethauser knew it. And then shoot yep. air wheels it into the dugout. So causing two, an extra yeah. base and the runner to go all the way to third. Two errors on the play. Volker on the throw to center and then shoots on the throw back in. So Four three. errors now on Ellsworth. 
Three errors in the inning. Mm -hmm. So Hamilton's now at third base. Two runs in in the inning. It's 8 2. And now here's Jordahl with another RBI chance with a runner at third. Two and two the count to the hitter. Travis make it Mike Jordahl. Jordahl's made first team all conference in the Northern Badger the last two years. And Schroeder missed with that one, three and two. Well, Portage feeling a lot better about things. Uh, Ellsworth had closed the gap to four, six, two, but now they've answered that has Portage with two in the top of the sixth. Inside to Jordan, all he walked. So you wonder if Schrader might be getting Close to the end of his rope. I think we're going to get a runner for Jordahl, who would have anyway, but I think when he took that ball off his knee, you want to get him out of there anyway. Yep. Brett Lenz back out to run for Jordahl. Portage fans are feeling pretty giddy right now. Can't blame them. Ever since Bob brought that announcement over about the yeah. fire engines meeting the club at 7 o'clock. Started baking the cakes there for a victory celebration. Yeah. He's an influential man, Bob Raynard. Makes things happen. Here's Adam Bortz. Couple of hits, three runs batted in. Stands to be the winning pitcher. Dug out nicely by the catcher, Volker. Ball one to Bortz. Two men are out here in the Portage sixth. It's all happened with two out. Throw to first, and Lentz gets back safely. You recall, Schroeder struck out Dobbins and got Waltz to bounce to third. Then he hit Green. Green stole second. Walker singled him in. Hamilton hit that rocket shot at Marsden. <laughs> they call it air. Wade Lebecki has arrived with more ice cream. And I finally get to taste the blue moon. That's awesome. Wow. Thanks, Wade. Wade Lebecki clearly his status of the all tournament. Yeah. Team. Clearly the greatest tournament director in <laughs> state championship history. Well, I don't know if I'll go that far. but So with the announcers refreshed, we get back to action. Yeah. One and one the count to Bortz. First and third, the base runners with two out. Portage with two in here in the sixth. Runner going. By that time, Thompson, about three quarters of the way down, looked back at home plate to see where the ball was. But fortunately for Portage, he had enough speed and had covered enough ground that he slides in safely with another steal. Third steal of the day. For Portage. Hamilton stays at third. So two runners in scoring position for Bortz with two outs, and he calls time. Single here turns this into a route. Yep. Fouled off the end of the bat. Bortz is two for three. Adam, two for five in the tournament, but again with three RBIs today, and he threw three scoreless innings in the mound today. Bortz swung through that one. Strike three, end of inning. But a good inning for the Portage Warriors. Only one hit. But they scored two runs. Warrior fans on their feet. Bottom of the sixth inning coming up. Score now Portage eight, Ellsworth two.
Well, the sun is breaking through the haze a little bit stronger now as we hit the Ellsworth sixth inning. James Georgicus, Mitch Matter, and Chandler Flynn scheduled to hit for the Panthers. Portage's lead back up to six runs, and Dobbins throws a strike, one and one. One of those were two big runs in the Portage top of the sixth. Makes that comeback for Ellsworth a little more difficult. Actually, a lot more difficult. Strike call to Georgicus, one and two. And Dobbins knows he's got to go out there and challenge people. Yep. He didn't know. He could have watched an earlier game. Got a little room to wiggle. Up six. Got a little Jonathan Papelbon in him, it looks like. He just kind of puts the bill of that hat down and tips his hat down and stares in for the sign. Watch this, he'll come. When he gets ready to go, he'll give it that real serious deal there. Look at that. Oh, yeah. Yeah, see? Georgicus fouls it off. Yeah, if you're the batter, you just see the bill of his cap and just the top of his eyeballs. And Think he's got that Ocho Cinco persona? Or? <laughs> I, don't, I don't know about that. Is that what Papelbar was in Ocho Cinco or Ocho? Uh, oh, Papelbar? Well, I thought you were talking about Ocho Cinco. No, no. Hot shot by Georgicus will be a base hit. Well, he didn't. He didn't care. He wasn't intimidated at all. Yeah, he was just concentrating and hitting the ball. Well, good start to the Ellsworth sixth inning. Oh, that's a nice, smooth, controlled swing by Georgicus, and he hit it hard to right for a hit. Sixth hit of the game for Ellsworth. Mitch Matter has a single and a run scored in two trips. Goes after the first one and fouls it back. Wind freshens a bit again from the right field corner to the left field corner. And a nice stop by Jordahl, the Portage catcher, to keep the runner Georgicus at first. No sense in taking any chances if you're an Ellsworth base runner. Down six. You need everybody, all hands on deck and all hands on the bases if you can. Matter, hot shot to left between third and short. Well. Something happening for the Panthers here in the sixth inning. Two on, nobody out. Two well-hit balls against Dobbins to start the inning. Nobody in the port in the bullpen yet. Boy, and Ellsworth, they've been hoping Chandler Flynn can break out of his two-day funk. He has been in a funk, and they need a base runner right here. Now's the time for 4-3. Nobody out. Strike call outside corner. Dobbins kind of not quite sidearms, but he kind of slings it and it leaves his hand on one side of the river and comes across the plate and got time caught the corner. Breaking ball, swing and a miss. And again, they keep going right after Chandler. Man, it was. He had five strikeouts right. in two games. And now he has to guess what's coming on 0-2. See if he just tries to throw it by him. Nope. Ball's the call. Dobbins wanted it, didn't get it. Yeah. 
PC on deck is 0 for 4 in the tournament as well. Stretch from Dobbins. Strike three that time he did catch the corner. So Flynn goes down on strikes for the third time today. So one out here in the sixth inning for Ellsworth. Geese, the sophomore right fielder hits. He struck out as well and reached on an air. Just foul. Went the other way with it, but now is just outside the third base bag. Portage pitchers have combined for 10 strikeouts. Boards had seven. Dobbins has three. Dobbins came in relief of Adam Bortz to start the fourth inning. In the air, this is trouble. Dropping fast and just over the glove of the third baseman, Matt Bortz. The bases are loaded for Ellsworth with only one out. And they turn the lineup over. And Brandon Volker is due. He's 0 for 3 today with a pair of strikeouts. Mm -hmm. Volker's 0 for 7 in the tournament. Well, he's one of their better hitters at 348. And obviously, their leadoff man. Dangerous territory for Portage. They're leading 6 2. Fouled off. In the Division Four championship game earlier today, Johnson Creek had an 11 4 lead against Coleman and gave it all back. There's two runs at the top of the inning, which turned the 6-2 lead into 8-2 right now real big. Oh, boy. Can you imagine if it's 6-2 right now? Here's Volker. Held up. Took a ball. One and one. Well, you're never safe until that last out is secure, are you? One one to Volker from Dobbins. Chopper to short. Hamilton will go to second for one. They'll try to turn it. Good job by Bortz over there to prevent the bouncing ball from getting past him. Volker reaches it first. He'll drive in a run with the ground out as Georgica scores. So, so they get one of them back. Yeah. But you get the impression Ellsworth better get another one, at least one here. Well. Here's the guy that can do it. Yep. Dennis shoots. He's been their hottest hitter. Single to center, double to left, single to right. Three for three. And Dobbins got that strike on the first pitch, 0 and 1. Shoots, blows a bubble now. Gets ready for the 0 1 pitch. Matters the runner at third for Ellsworth. Geezy the runner at first. We'll check that Volker the runner at first. And strike two to the batter. Shoots. And as Bro said, you get the feel that if Portage can get out of this inning only 8 3, they'd feel very good indeed. Ellsworth would love to get that runner home from third. 0 2. Way outside. I think Matter flustered the pitcher there by spurting down, sprinting down the line. Mm -hmm. yeah. Brady Schroeder is the hitter in the on deck circle for Ellsworth. Another reason Schutz would like to keep this inning alive. One and two, the count to the Ellsworth center fielder. Looping fly ball to right. It'll hold up for Walls, and he makes the catch for the third out. Well, that left the bat. You weren't sure, but Walls had it under control, and Dobbins gets out of it with only one run scoring. Three hits in the inning for Ellsworth, but the Panthers can only muster one. Top of the seventh coming up. The Warriors to bat with an 8-3 lead.
Portage Warriors come to bat at the top of the seventh inning with an 8-3 lead. And they'll face a new pitcher. We'll tell you about him in just a moment. But first, we want to thank our dedicated When We Were Young production crew. There's Jess, one of our cameramen. He's been here all week. Brent's been toiling as well. And Brandon over at third almost got hit with a ball, but he's still standing and waving. We want to thank all of our crew. This is game 15 of 16, and there's precious little time to relax. We thank them for all their efforts this week. We told you about the new pitcher for Ellsworth. He is sophomore Isaac Hines. Isaac's had a lot of work in the bullpen this turn. He's finally getting the game. On the year, he's 3 0 with a 255 earned run average. This is his eighth game. Fifth out of the bullpen. He's thrown a complete game and a shutout as a starter. He's also had a save in 24 and two thirds innings. Isaac Hines has allowed 38 hits, 20 earned runs. The sophomore has walked 24 and struck out two. He walked three and struck out nine. Earlier this year, Isaac Hines pitched a no hitter against Lake City, Minnesota. That was April 12th. Get this, it was a six inning win. Ellsworth won at 10 nothing. He needed 55 pitches for the six inning no hitter. Obviously, he is the future of Ellsworth mm -hmm. baseball. Matt Bortz is the leadoff batter for Portage in the top of the seventh. Warriors know those last three outs are going to be awful tough to get. Wouldn't hurt to have another run or two on the board, would it? Panthers have five seniors on the roster. Man, they got here through their pitching. I mean, they came into this game having only allowed three runs in their previous four games, all during the tournament. But today, Portage came out of the shoot hard as they did last night. Right. Last night they had four in the first inning. Tonight they had three in the first, three in the second. So Isaac Hines, the new pitcher. He's two and one on his first hitter. And this is Bortz hitting one to right center field. That's going to be a tough play. And the center fielder shoots, dies, but can't get it. It's going to be a long single for Matt Bortz to start the seventh. Well, we talked about the big outfield here at Fox City Stadium, and there's an example of it. A lot of ground to cover for Schutz and Giese and Wright and Flynn, the second baseman. Nobody could get to it. Schutz was the closest, but it's a hit for Matt Bortz. And he's on first with nobody out in the seventh. Bo Zine, the hitter now. Low for ball one to the Portage center fielder. Hit well to center, but shoots had it played pretty well, and he moves over to his right and makes the catch for the first out. Zion flies to center. Zion with a couple RBIs today. One for four now. Dobbins is swing the bat again. He's in the number eight hole in the Portage lineup. Struck out looking his first trip. This one's chopped to the hole. It's short. Nice play by Bedhauser. Here's the turn, and they got two. Nice play. Bedhauser to Flynn to Marson, and that's a double play to end the seventh. Matt Porch led it off with a single, but here's the twin killing by the Ellsworth Panthers. Nice turn by Chandler Flynn at second. Well, it'll be Brady Schroeder, Jake Bedhauser, and Tyler Marson coming up for Ellsworth. Last chance, bottom of the seventh, 8 3 Portage.
The Ellsworth Panthers trying to score five to tie. If they get six, they'll win a state championship. But they'll start at the start with Brady Schroeder and first pitch is a strike. Oh, that Portage crowd's making a lot of noise. All the students on their feet. They have for two days. Mm, Schroeder doesn't offer ball one. Schroeder will get out any way at all. We'll take a walk down by five. It doesn't matter. Mm, home plate umpire Todd Krieger doesn't move a muscle. So that means it's ball two. Portage three outs away from their second state championship in baseball. But Schroeder leads off the seventh with a hit to right. I tell you, bro. Those last three outs are never easy. Doesn't matter what level you're at. Yeah. Big leagues or minor leagues or college or high school. In a big game, those three outs are the toughest to get. Last three. Yep. Jake Bedhauser now to the plate. 0 for 3 for the Ellsworth cleanup hitter. Two strikeouts. He's had a tough tournament, just 1 of 7 for a guy who's really put up some impressive numbers. Came in to the tournament hitting 492 with two homers and 25 runs batted in. Slugging percentage of 792. But he's been neutralized by Racine St. Catharines last night and by the Portage staff today. Big cut by Bedhauser and he fouls it straight back and right into the booth. You're not going to tell me Dave Anderson I don't, snare I, that I, one. It was in that direction. We can't really see around the corner here, but people are still looking back there. <laughs> Something good must have happened. One strike to Bedhauser. Runner going to second, and the throw was behind the. Well, Jordan threw that away. one from yeah. his knees, didn't he? Yeah. And the runner Schroeder was watching the play, and then all of a sudden, like, oh boy, this is closer than I think. I think like a lot of us, it was going to be in defensive indifference, yeah. and all of a sudden, Jordan from his knees whipped the throw down there and almost got Schroeder. No, he wasn't indifferent at all. One and one, the count to the batter. Runner at second. Oh boy, that almost got Bethausen in the helmet. <laughs> Two and one. So Schroeder's now at second. Ellsworth realizing you can't get them all back at once, but you have to get them all back in this inning. Another mighty Bedhausen swing is a foul ball. Two and two. So just joining us, Portage scored three in the first, three in the second. It was 6 nothing when Ellsworth came back with two in the bottom of the fourth to make it 6-2. And Portage got those two runs back at the top of the sixth, 8-2. And Ellsworth with a run in the sixth to make it 8-3. And now they're batting with nobody out in the bottom of the seventh. And Alex Dobbins just hit Jake Bedhauser with a 2 2 pitch. Oh, he'd love to have that one back. Ellsworth will take it, though. They get the first two men out in the, in the seventh. So Dobbins has put the first two men on here in the Ellsworth seventh inning, and we'll have a conference at the mound. That's the Portage infield. Now here comes Mike Hemming to. To join the conference. Yep, had his words of wisdom. Nobody warming in the Portage bullpen. He had somebody up before, uh, prior to the inning, though. Okay. Oh, ha Hamilton had been right. a time or two. So that certainly would be an option if Mike Hemming chooses to do so. But, yep, and they're going to make the move. So Dobbins leaves in the seventh. So Travis Hamilton, who was the shortstop. And we saw he's got a strong arm. Yep. He will try to close this one out. Hamilton on the year 2-0, or 1-0 with a 
earned run average. This is his sixth game. He's got one save in seven innings of work. He's allowed three hits, two earned runs. He's walked four and struck out eight. We've well, been bothered by it. an elbow problem. Yeah. From what I've heard. Or a shoulder problem, excuse me. Okay, so lots of changes in addition to Hamilton moving to the mound from shortstop. They'll take Brady Green, the second baseman, move him to shortstop to replace Hamilton. And Brett Lenz is going. Where's Brett Lenz going? I think Jordan Walker's now the second baseman. Oh, Lenz is just stringing a glove out for. Uh, oh, okay. Well, no, Lenz or is, is going to stand again. I think Lenz is in left. Yeah. So again, we'll get things straightened out and we'll review all those changes. So clearly this is what Portage feels is their best defensive alignment. Yep. Protecting a five-run lead with two on, nobody out in the seventh inning of the Division II state title game. So Brett Lentz is in left, Jordan Walker is at second, Brady Green at short, and Travis Hamilton is the Portage pitcher trying to close it out for a state championship. Tyler Marsden had three hits last night in the semifinal. He's 0 for 2 today. First and second, nobody out. First pitch fouled off. Healthy cut by Marson. Patty Hart has to go to three. Marson, a 313 hitter on the season. Would love to deliver for Ellsworth right here. The season is riding on it. To second base. That's Walker to Green, and they turn two. The new shortstop, Brady Green, turned it. Two down. Well, I didn't think they had a chance. That ball wasn't hit very hard. But give the middle infielders credit. They get it over to Green in a hurry, and he makes a strong relay throw. This isn't really very oh. hard hit. Well, Marson got a slow start out of the box. He almost slipped a little bit, but there you see. Throw beat him by half a step. Yep, you're right. So obviously a huge play for Portage. Mm. So Walker, who just came in from left field to play second, started it. Green, who moved from second to short, turned it. And Portage gets a huge double play. Still a runner at third. That's Schroeder. But now two outs and last chance for Ellsworth. And it's a bouncing ball to second. Walker throws to first. And the Portage Warriors have won their second state baseball championship. Let the dog pile begin. <laughs> and let the... Fire and police escort commence as well later this evening in Portage. They will be bringing home the champs as Portage goes two for two in its visits to the state tournament. They win in the first time in 06. They win again in 2012. Besting Ellsworth, eight to three. A team that finished second in the Badger North Conference with an eight and four record behind the champion Reedsburg. There's Mike Hemming, his second state title. He was the head man when Portage won it in 2006. And it's happy times for the Warriors. As now when, you, when it all works out for you, I guess you can hardly believe it. There you see Mike Hemming with his thoughts and happy thoughts they are. Final totals, Portage with eight runs, eight hits, two errors. Ellsworth, three runs, nine hits, and four errors. The Portage Warriors celebrating the Division II WIAA State Baseball Championship. We'll be back with more on our Division II title game in just a moment. You're watching the WIAA State Baseball Tournament on Fox Sports Wisconsin.
Check, check, check. Mic check. One, two, three, four, five. Field mic. One, two, three, four, okay. Sure. Yep. All right. Here's toss to Bob Brainerd in three, two, one. So the Portage Warriors capture their second WIAA State Division II Baseball Championship. They won it in 2006. They win it again in 2012. 8-3 the final Portage over Ellsworth. 
Let's now go down to the field where Bob Brainerd is standing by with our star of the game. I'm like, dude, already. I give him elf and trap. Nothing with Reese's. Well, he's not insured. He's just. I'm sorry, I have to do that. You have to. Sorry to rush. Program says. One, two, three, four, five. Yep, Ron, good. Check. Switch sides. Good. Check one, two, one, two, one, two. Mic check, mic check, mic check. Better? All right. Thanks for playing along. Here, now I'm, now I'm going to switch. We'll get there. We're ready. Good. Guys, thanks. I'm with Adam Bortz. Tell everybody where you and some of your teammates were in 2006. Uh, we were sitting in these stands right here watching uh, our alumni win it in 2006, and we wanted to follow in their footsteps and get one ourselves. So. You guys were young back then, but you kind of you kind of made a bond to someday be here at seniors. How does it feel to to make that bond, make that promise to yourselves, and then fulfill it? It feels great. Um, we have eight seniors. We all came together along with the rest of our team, the juniors and sophomores, and fulfilling the dream is amazing. You got it done on the mound and at the plate. What do you like best when when you're feeling a groove, whether it's at the plate or on the hill? What do you like best to do as far as contributing to the team effort? Uh, just anything I can do, put the ball across, you know, get it, get it some, get into some ground balls, you know, and get, get the outs. Tell me about you guys. Just rewind a little bit to the beginning of the season. You guys made a promise when you were youngsters. What about the beginning of the year? Was that that same vibe amongst your teammates? Uh, you know, we struggled a little bit, but we gathered ourselves and we just came here ready to play, you know, and we got it. We happened to get it. Adam, thanks. One last thing. What's in the water in Portage? You guys eating more vitamins or cereal? What's going on? A lot of biggins down there. Vitamin C, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> well, congratulations. Keep doing what you guys are doing, but right now, go celebrate your championship. All right, thank you. Guys, back to you. Thank you. All right. <clears throat> yep. All right. Final wrap in three, two, one. All right, Bob, thanks very much. And congratulations to Adam Bortz and all the Portage Warriors. Well, I think when you look back at this Division II championship this week, the, the two games, the semis, and the final, you look at Portage. They hit Ryan Radu hard early against uh, Fox Valley Lutheran in the semifinal game. They hit Brady Schroeder hard early here in the championship game, and they had plenty of runs and held on to win both games. I agree. It's like they punched both teams in the nose right early, and the opponent never recovered. Radu, the All-Stater, gave up four. He hit four guys. Obviously, had some problems in the semifinals, but they also banged them around. They got the lead, and they never looked back. Today, same story as you say. Brady Schroeder had control problems early. He walked three guys in the first inning. Adam Bortz, Bob's guest, had a two-run single. He added another single in the second when they added on three more. They took advantage of of what was given to them in both occasions, some control problems early by the aces of the respective opponent's staff. And then they got some pretty good pitching themselves. Last night it was Mark Bortz, or Matt Bortz. Today it was Adam Bortz. He struck out seven and three innings of work. Alex Dobbins came in, did a nice job in relief. And finally, Travis Hamilton finished up. And Portage goes two for two in visits to the state tournament. And congratulations to them. Ellsworth Panthers finished the season with 21 wins and five losses.
While the Portage Warriors win their last nine games of the season, they end with a record of 22 wins and six losses and the Division II state championship. Thanks to everyone for watching our coverage of the Division II title game for our entire When We Were Young Productions crew, along with Bob Brainerd, Bill Brophy, I'm Jay Wilson. Final score once again, Portage 8, Ellsworth 3.